Here's a warning. This video is a complete geek out session. So if you're not curious about irons and ironing and pressing in uh, quilt seams, don't bother with this. Just move on, watch something else. Watch something entertaining. Maybe something about cruises or puppies. But if, uh, if you're ready to go down a rabbit hole and learn about irons, um, today's a good day. A good place to start is right here. This morning I was talking to my quilting buddies in a virtual meeting over Zoom and um, we were talking about using silk fabric, we were talking about stabilizing the silk, and we were talking about, um, well, it ended up being a discussion about irons and I think that was because of me. I've been looking for the perfect iron to use in my quilting ever since I started quilting, so that's been over 30 years. and. Um, yeah, I think I took a little heat from my friends because I've got way too many irons. But the good news is I got to, um, I've, I've got them all plugged in right now, and I'm going to do a little bit of, a uh, little bit of research on on how hot irons get, and what irons are effective. And so uh, I went to Home Depot, and I got this. It's about $25. Um, you can get these. Uh, it's a non-contact infrared uh, thermometer, and you can get these at Harbor Freight for about $10. But I just wanted a quick trip, so I went to Home Depot and got this one. And it's made by it's made by General. All right. So the General and I are going to go check out the irons I've got all over the house, and they include um, a couple of Rowentas, which I've been using for years. They include uh, a petite press made by Dritz. I've got a uh, Deris mini craft iron, and I've got um, something that comes to us from another hobby, and that's the model airplane world where they actually fly the model airplanes. And it's called a seam ceiling. It's called a ceiling iron. And so I'm going to compare the temperatures on the sole plates of these items. This is one of my old Rowentas. It was made in Germany. Uh, it's very heavy. Uh, it has served me well for a long time. It's got automatic shutoff, and that's been very annoying. Uh, it's taken a few hits, fallen off the ironing board a few times. I still recommend Rowenta, but uh, just be careful that you get one of the models that's made in Europe. They are made in other places in the world, and I find these um, these ones made in Europe are a little bit more reliable, have a little bit more longer lifespan. All right, and these are the kind of temperatures we're getting when the iron is set to its hottest setting, which is for cotton and linen. And that's why they work so well. That's those are good good high temperatures. And they do produce a lot of steam. But this iron is probably 25 years old and they really don't make them like they used to. This was as close as you could come to a perfect iron 25 years ago. This is my workhorse. I keep this in the studio when I'm working. Uh, it stays hot all day and I just keep filling it with water. I've had to have it repaired once because it wasn't reaching uh, hot temperatures anymore. Uh, I mostly use this for pressing out uh, long seams when I'm joining blocks or when I'm finishing a quilt. But uh, I like it. It's got a lot of steam. I mean, that's the most awesome part about it. So let's let's t check the temperature on this. Yeah, this is quite a bit cooler. It's mostly the steam that's doing the work in this case. This is the Petite Press. I think it costs about $40 retail at places like Michael's or Joann's. So that means you can usually get it for at least 40% off with a coupon. Um, this is the one I've been taking to workshops for the last couple of years. And I do like it, but here's the problem. While the others were heating up, this one heated up and then it, the auto shutoff kicked in. So now to get a temperature reading, I'm going to have to turn it back on. And it gives no warning that it's turning off. So as you're working, suddenly you turn to, to press a, a small seam open and it's cold. It's safe, it's easy to transport, but we'll have to come back to this to get a temperature reading. This little iron is made by Clover. It's got uh, a high and low setting. I've got it set on high right now. Oh, and also medium. 
Um, it also has a separate switch on the cord. And you can change out the heads on this one. So I've got the iron on it right now. So let's see how hot that's getting. All right, the petite press just beeped, which means it's hot now. So let's find out what the temperature is. And that's a pretty wide range. The hottest spot appears to be right about here. People who make and fly model airplanes uh, might know what this is. This is the Hobbyco sealing iron, and it's used to apply uh, fabric to the wings of model airplanes, the kind of model airplanes that actually fly. And I got this on eBay. I think it's about 30 years old. I got it on the recommendation of Sue Benner. I'm taking a workshop with her in a few weeks, and this was an optional item she mentioned, and I was intrigued because I'm always looking for the perfect iron. So let's check it out. Now at present I've got this set on a kind of midway between low and high. That's because when I had it set on high the other day, uh, the knob, the rheostat knob here burned my fingers. So here's the temperature of that knob. Yeah, that's hot enough to boil water. That's scalding hot right now. So that's a little bit of a safety concern for me. I know it's it's there now, so I won't touch it. but. Obviously, it's a, it's old. It's super hot. This I bought at a recent sewing expo here in the Pacific Northwest. It is a, the mini craft iron. I think it's optimized for left-handed people. And at the show, they said that they had it plugged in for, um, at every show they had, they've been using it for several years and it's, it keeps going strong. It does not shut off and actually, when I'm in a workshop, I prefer that. So let's find out how hot this thing is. Yeah, that's real hot too. Different temperatures on different points on the sole plate. But the handle's not hot. It's comfortable, comfortable to hold on to. Very small, but it'd be a nice iron to have right next to you in a workshop so you can do short seams. I saw people using this in an applique workshop a few years back. It says walnut hollow on the handle. Basically, it's a soldering iron. You, you can get different tips to insert in the end here, but I've got a little flat iron inserted right here. So let's see how hot that's, that's getting. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice and hot. Really no safety on this. Um, it's just got a simple on-off switch. There's no way to dial the temperature up or down. There's no rheostat on it. Uh, but I think given those temperatures, it would be pretty effective to use in a workshop. This also comes with another tiny little accessory, which if you were doing really delicate, tiny bits of applique, this might be really handy to use. It would still get up to the same temperatures. I warned you, totally geeking out on this. Uh, I hope that was useful to you. I know I learned a lot about my equipment. I've made some decisions now about what will go to workshops with me and what will go to Goodwill. Um, be safe with your irons. Uh, be careful how many you plug in at one time and uh, have a good creative journey. Thanks for watching.